This video will be going over section 2.3, which is on solving basic sine and cosine equations. Um, I'll go ahead and say now what I mean by basic is our equations are going to have just a single sine or cosine in them and nothing else. So no sine times cosine, no powers of sine or cosine or anything like that. All right, so the main topics here, there's going to be a pretty big issue initially with solving trig equations. And then we'll talk about the general strategy to actually solving them. And then we'll just practice solving them. I'm going to have this branched off into kind of two sections here. Um, we talked about in section 2.1 what the period of a sine and cosine graph are. Um, we'll start with the period of 2 pi. That's really our basic one. Um, it's when that B is 1, which I'll remind you of when we see the problem. And then the second part we'll talk about when the period is not 2 pi. The strategy doesn't really change, but how you go about solving part of it, you will just want to be really careful on when the period is not 2 pi. All right, but we'll go ahead and begin with the issues of solving trig equations and the general strategy. All right, so I'm um, just going to go ahead and read through this. It's all pretty important to what we're going to be doing. Uh, in this section, we are going to learn how to solve trig equations involving a sine or a cosine function. For example, we could be asked to solve the equation sine of x equals 0 0.4. Like always, when we are trying to solve an equation, what we're doing is trying, trying to find the x values that make this true. Right? What x values make sine of 0 0.4? As we saw with the last section, what we can do is do the sine inverse of each side, get the x by itself, and this visual here will kind of work it out. Do the sine inverse of each side of this equation here, sine of x equals 0 0.4. Then we do the sine inverse of each side. I thought I changed my color, but that doesn't really matter. So sine inverse of each side, and as we talked about last section, sine inverse and sine of trig function, it's inverse cancel out. And then we get x equals, this is supposed to be an exponent, negative 1 of 0 0.4. And then we type that in our calculator and get this for x. All right. So the thing is, this is not a wrong answer. The problem is, this is one only one of the answers, which I'll explain why it's only one of the answers below. All right, the basic reason this is only one of the answers is because of the way the graph of sine works. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and talk about what we're dealing with here. The tricky part in solving trig equations is that not all of the solutions, this is not all the solutions, but your calculator will only give you this one. Because when you type in sine inverse or cosine inverse, you only get one answer out. Uh, but really what we are asking, if we're trying to figure out what sine of x equals 0 0.4, we can ask the question, where do these two graphs intersect? Meaning y equals sine of x in red and y equals 0 0.4 in the blue. The x value where these two graphs intersect would be, intersect would be our answer. Uh, one thing I already wrote here, make sure you, you want to be in radian mode because our answers for these questions, we're almost always going to be asked to be in radian mode. Um, but what we found above was actually this very first answer that I conveniently have in orange. This was x equals 0 0.4115. Okay. So what I have below here, uh, what I have highlighted here, all these that I have circled in black are the some of the answers that are outside of 0 to 2 pi. These green lines are just trying to separate 0 to 2 pi. And then you'll notice we have two solutions inside. We have the 0 0.4115 and we have this other answer. We'll actually see that we learned how to figure out this other answer before. And it's not too bad once you have the two answers inside 0 to 2 pi to get all of them. So the orange point is the solution we found by a calculator. It is about x equals 0 0.4115. Um, all the dots are the solutions. The black ones and the orange and the purple one are all solutions. 
and we're going to have infinitely many solutions because the graph of sine is going to just keep doing the shape over and over again. Every time we go through a period, we're going to get two more answers. All right, the section between the two vertical green bars is from 0 to 2 pi. There are two intersection points there, which means there's two answers there. The reason we have two answers there is because there's two quadrants where sine is positive. We're trying to figure out where sine equals 0 0.4, and one of the quadrants that is positive gives us the first answer. The other quad quadrant is positive gives us the second answer. And once you figure out the two solutions, you can find the rest of your solutions by your knowledge of the period. All right. The second one here, the quadrant 2 angle, the purple spot, has this x value. But we'll talk about how to get that when we go through the problems. So what we'll do to finish up, since the period of sine of x is 2 pi, because remember that's when our period is 2 pi over b, and b is 1, We'll use a dummy variable, what we call a dummy variable, we'll call it n, to represent any whole number or integer. Once we find our two solutions between 0 and 2 pi, we're going to add the period times that letter n to each solution to get the general solutions. So for this one, once we found the first and second one, we'll do plus 2 pi, the period, times n on each one. And that is our general solution for this problem. But once again, we will talk about how to get the second one in more detail when we get to the problems. So these are the two general solutions. I just kind of explained what this plus 2 pi n thing here is doing. If we add 2 pi, which is like having n equals 1, that's this next one past 2 pi. And if we added 2 pi times 2 would be the next one over here. This purple one is where x is about 2.73, however we got that number. If we hop one period over, this is going to be when we have n equals 1. If we go backwards 2 pi, this is when we have n equals negative 1, negative 2, and so on. All right. All right. But a final important note um, that just needs to be mentioned here the second part of the solution, the 2.73, is separated from the first, the 0 0.4115. What we mean by that is you can't just write 0 0.4115 plus 2 pi n to get all your answers. You'll only be getting every other one. You'll get this one, you'll get this one, you'll get this one, but you won't get any of the ones that come from the purple. Right, but we're going to start with solving trig equations with a period of 2 pi, which means the x or theta or whatever is inside is just going to be multiplied by 1. What we're going to do here, you'll notice in the, all the directions I'll have, it'll kind of be guided for you. You'll look for your two answers between 0 and 2 pi. And then we'll get the general solution, which means add the 2 pi times n or k or whatever letter they tell us to use. So this first one here, some of them, not many, but some of them will say give exact solutions. That means the numbers, the angles can be found on the unit circle. This one says find all solutions to the equation 2 times sine of theta equals square root of 3. Give exact solutions, which means we're going to use the unit circle. We're not going to use our calculator all here unless if you want to check your answers. Uh, this part here, use k as the arbitrary integer. What this is saying is add 2 pi k instead of n, use k, to the end of each solution.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and solve this. All right, what you would always want to do to solve a trig equation is always get the trig part by itself first meaning get the sine or the cosine of theta x whatever it is get the trig part by itself first you don't want to try to do anything with any extra numbers over here All right so what we want to do to get it by itself we want to get that sine of theta by itself it'd be a good idea to divide by the two get the sine of theta by itself All right, so we always get the trig part by itself first. We get sine of theta equals square root of 3 over 2. All right now, the homework and the directions here kind of guide you. We want to get our two answers between 0 and 2 pi. So the question is what two angles between 0 and 2 pi Uh, does this work for the sine of theta equals square root of 3? All right, and once again, since this one says exact solutions, you will be able to get them from the unit circle. You do have to have that memorized in some ways at this point. But I'll just sketch a little picture here to send a reminder. All right, so sine is positive and quadrants one and two. And the reason we care so much about that is because we're asking if sine is positive. So we're gonna have an angle in quadrant one and an angle in quadrant two. And the reference angle for square root of 3 over 2 for sine is 60 degrees or for radians pi over 3. And remember the reference angles are the same. We talked about this quite a while ago. I know it's been some time now, but the reference angles are going to be the same. So the reference angle for sine being square root of 3 over 2 is 60 degrees or since we're in radians pi over 3. Now if you go through and compute this, this angle here in quadrant 1 is 0 plus pi over 3 which is pi over 3. And in quadrant 2 since it's behind pi we do pi minus pi over 3 which is 2 pi over 3. I get a common denominator, 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. All right, but what you'll notice here is we've now got our two angles between 0 and 2 pi that work. All right, that's really the first step of the directions. I'll scroll back up, give your two answers between 0 and 2 pi, and these are the two answers. Right. You don't have to worry about the other quadrants because sine is negative in the other quadrants. You're only going to ever get two answers at this step. Right. In the first part of the problem, this would be it. You give your two answers, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Now the second step, just to finish up. Give the general solution. The way you take you do this is you take your angle, one of your angles, and you add 2 pi, since that's the period, times k. They're telling us to use k. And then we do the same thing with the other angle, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi times k. So we take each of our two solutions and add 2 pi times the letter. We're adding k times the period. 
but just pay attention in the homework what letter is it telling you to use it could be different it could be n k l j whatever it asks you to use all right but without the calculator this is how you got to do it since it says exact solutions if you try to do this the way we're going to do the other ones with the calculator and you get decimal answers it's not going to work it's got to be exact all right, so the next one, as you can see, and as we'll get to, it says find all solutions to cosine of theta equals 0 0.48 to three decimal places. Use n as the arbitrary integer. All right, so there are two things we want to keep in mind here when we start. Actually, really, the main first thing is how you're going to go about solving this. There's two reasons you know you would use a calculator here. One is that we do not know where cosine of theta equals 0 0.48. So that is not an output on the unit circle. But also because it tells us to round. So either of these things is going to tell us we have to round using a calculator. We're going to use our calculator at some point. But the first order of business, if we're going to get all the solutions, is we got to find the two angles between 0 and 2 pi that work. There's only going to be two. Once again, I repeat that. There's only going to be two. There's not going to be one. There's not going to be three. There's not going to be zero. There's going to be two. And each one comes from this time we're looking at quadrants where cosine will end up being positive. All right, but we want to begin by solving it the same way as before. We got our cosine of theta, which is already by itself. The trig part is by itself. which means we can do the inverse of each side. Right? We're trying to get the theta by itself. The re way we get rid of the cosine is we do the inverse cosine of each side. The, once again, this is the proper way to do it. After this one, I'll probably stop writing this step here just talk about do the inverse of each side but just as a reminder what we're talking about here is we do the cosine inverse of each side so we got cosine inverse of cosine of theta equals cosine inverse of 0 0.48 the cosine and cosine inverse knock each other out that's the point and we get theta equals cosine inverse of 0 0.48 all right, we put this in our calculator, and I'll remind you of the directions up here. It says between 0 and 2 pi, so we're going to be in radians, right? We're going to be in radians here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that. What is, well, let's make sure we're in uh, radian mode, which we are. What is cosine inverse of 0 0.48? And we get 1.07. Uh, wait, it says around the three spots. I need to round further than that. 1.0701. Right, the reason I'm rounding one further is we're going to have to use this to get the second uh, answer here. So this is like our first answer between 0 and 2 pi. All right, we need to get the second answer. And this relies heavily on you knowing what quadrants are going to be important here. We're trying to figure out what, where cosine is positive. So, and you can draw your picture out. Cosine is positive 
in what two quadrants? In quadrants one, because they're all positive there, and because it's the x value, quadrant four. All right, so we're going to have an answer in each one of these quadrants. And we figured out the one in quadrant one because this 1.0701 is in quadrant one. Right, if, and we, we talked about this a lot, um, but we can just check and see that 1.0701 is between zero and pi over two because pi over two is about 1.57. Right, now, once we've drawn the picture, just think back to stuff in unit one. How do we figure out this angle? Well, they have the same reference angle, just like the previous section, previous problem. Doesn't matter if we use our calculator or not. And the reference angle here, since this is in quadrant one, this, is, this reference angle is 1.07 minus zero. And so our reference angle is 1.0701. Now we finish up getting the second answer here, this angle in quadrant four. How do we get it? Well, we now do two pi minus our reference angle. Remember, you don't want to do zero minus our reference angle because it's going to be negative. If you don't want an answer negative, you want your answers between zero and two pi. So that's why we use the two pi. And we want to type that in our calculator because we can't do that in our head. Two pi minus 1.0701. And we got 5.213. Well, since I'm not going to do anything with this answer as far as manipulating it to get a future answer, I'll just round that to three spots. Okay. So once again, I'll summarize what we're doing here to figure finding the two angles between 0 and 2 pi are, are, is your first step. We can get our first angle pretty much just using the calculator, do the inverse and see what comes out. To get the second angle, we have to point out what quadrant is it gonna be in, what is its reference angle. And to do that, we have to use the first answer we got. Since our first answer was in quadrant one and our second answer is in quadrant four, the way we computed it, we figure out the reference angle of our quadrant one angle and then we use that to figure out the reference angle, to figure out the actual angle in quadrant four. All right, so our two answers, answers between zero and two pi is 1.070, if you only round to three spots, and 5.213 exactly what we got here. The general solutions all right just like last time you pretty much done all the work for the general solutions the period of this is 2 pi because it b is 1 here and we're using n as the arbitrary integer we want to add 2 pi times n to each of our answers. But if you uh, want to check your answers, the, this first one, 1.070, 1 should be pretty straightforward to check. Uh, well, they're both straightforward to check, but if you really want to check your second answer, did I compute this 5.213 right? You know, what is cosine of 5.213? 
If it's about that 0.48, we're good to go. We rounded, so we expect it a little bit off, but yes, it is good to go. It's about 0.48. But these are the answers. Once again, when you look at the homework, you'll see two answer boxes. One is for the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. One's for the general solutions. You type them in, separated by a comma. Okay. So all of the ones with the period of 2 pi follow the same basic idea. The one I want to make sure we hit on is when sine is a negative number, sine is equal to a negative number because of what your calculator puts out. All right, so number three here, we want to solve sine of x equals negative 0 0.35 to four decimal places. Use m as the arbitrary integer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just point that out now. Remind you the period equals two pi because the b is one. And since we're going to use m as the arbitrary entry, we're going to add 2 pi times m to the two solutions we get. All right. So we've got to focus on getting our two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. If we can do that, then we'll just add 2 pi m to each one and we'll have our answers. All right, so we'll solve sine of x equals negative 0 0.35. Now I'll just write in here, what are we gonna do to get x by itself? We do sine inverse of each side. And we get x equals sine inverse. Don't forget the negative since it's already over here, it has to go inside. You don't put it out front. And sine inverse of negative 0 0.35 is negative 0 0.35757. Right. Now it says to round to four decimal places, which is why I went one further. All right, now the question is, we're going to really go through and do it like last time. We want our ans two answers between 0 and 2 pi. And really, the first thing I want you to notice is this answer itself isn't even between 0 and 2 pi. It's negative. But we have talked about this before. This is in quadrant 4 because it's between negative pi over 2 and 0. Okay, so when you do sine and you have a negative number, you're going to get an angle that's negative. It's going to be in quadrant 4. It's not actually a part of our answer because it's not between 0 and 2 pi, but we have to use it. And then also we can point out, you know, we're trying to figure out what sine is negative. Sine is negative in quadrants three and four, because sine is the y value. We're gonna have another angle in quadrant three. We're gonna get a quadrant four angle and a quadrant three angle. Right. Now, the way you go about getting the actual two answers is up to you. The first thing I like to do is point out the reference angle because it's actually pretty straightforward when you do this um, from the negative one. The reference angle, since negative is a little bit smaller than zero, the way you get the reference angle here computed is zero minus the negative 0.35757. And the double negative makes a plus, which is 0 0.35757. But remember, this would also be the same 
reference angle. That's the fundamental idea here. Your two answers are going to have the same reference angle. Right. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and compute the quadrant three angle because this is pi. Pa this is past pi by the reference angle. So we got pi plus zero point three five seven five seven. And if we go ahead and put that in our calculator. We get 3.4992 rounded to four spots. And I don't know why it started with a zero, it starts with a three. So we got three point, forgot what I said already, 4992. All right, so that's our quadrant three angle. Our quadrant four angle, right, this one comes directly from this angle here. We just wanna go around one more time. We're gonna be in the same spot, so we add two pi. And that's that coterminal angle stuff. If we're ending at the same spot, the sign it has the same value. So we just add 2 pi to get between 0 and 2 pi. And now let's go ahead and do that. We got negative 0 0.35757 plus 2 pi. And we get 5.92 five six five point nine two five six so our quadrant four angle between zero and two pi is five point nine two five six right so we've got our two angles now these are our two angles between zero and two pi that work Quadrants one and two is sine is positive, so we're not gonna have anything there. Three point four nine nine two and five point nine two five six. And then the general solutions, we're just gonna take each one of these and add two pi times m. We got 3.4992 plus 2 pi times m and 3, sorry, not 3, 5.9256 plus 2 pi times m. Okay. So once again, just to repeat, because now we're going to be doing ones with the period not being 2 pi, we have to be a little more careful. But just to go over the general strategy, once again, recap, we look at our formula. We can figure out the period here, which is 2 pi right away. We realize what we can add to it, what we need to add to it at the end. Then we get our two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. The first one comes from solving, <coughs> excuse me, solving the equation and using your calculator. This one we happen to not have between zero and two pi, so we had to ultimately add two pi to it. And then we figure out what other qua what quadrants are the two answers in. We should already have one of them from the calculator. The other one we will get using the reference angle. All right, so it, it's really up to you what order you do things specifically in with these problems. Uh, some people might like to, at the beginning, just say, well, sine's negative, I'm going to have quadrant 3 and 4, and then do the problem. Draw the picture and do the problem, which is fine. It's totally up to you how you go about doing it. All right, but ultimately, once again, you get your two angles between 0 and 2 pi, and then you find the general solutions from there.
now to finish the section just talking about solving trig equations when the period's not 2 pi the reason this might have a subtle difference why it could throw you through a little loop is the figuring out the other angle so here the quadrant 3 angle here the you know, quadrant 4 angle we had to do the reference angle stuff if the period's not 2 pi you just have to be very careful about solving it but also the way you'll see the questions worded instead of saying giving your solutions between 0 and 2 pi since the period changes you'll see it worded like this give your two smallest positive answers then the general solution All right so this right here is really a replacement for saying 0 to 2 pi when the period is 2 pi or when the period is not 2 pi All right, so that's just something to keep in mind of the directions. They're not trying to throw you off. We're just trying to say the period is no longer 2 pi. So saying between 0 and 2 pi isn't the correct terminology. All right, so what we'll do is we'll do it that way. Um, we want to solve this one. 5 sine of 5x equals 4. And we want to use m as the arbitrary integer. Let me not write through that. Now, one thing I would say, the thing I did at the beginning of the last one, and I'm going to just do at the beginning from here on out, is point out the, the period is 2 pi over b, which is 5. This doesn't simplify. Don't simplify it. What we're going to do is when we use the m as the arbitrary integer, we're going to add 2 pi over 5 times m to each solution, each of the two. All right, but we want to solve and get the two small solutions, which is just going to be done the same way as before for 0 to 2 pi. All right, so we've got to get the trig part by itself. You're not going to do anything with the 5 inside here. It's stuck inside with the x. You're not going to mess with that yet. But you do need to get rid of this 5. All right, so we get, we're going to divide each side by the 5 to get rid of the 5 out front. And we have sine of... 5x equals 4 over 5. It absolutely does not matter what's inside here. You have to get rid of the sign first because that is what's on the outside. So at this step, we do the sine inverse of each side. Now for this one, because our inside is not just x, I'm going to do it out just to show you what happens. Yeah, it looks exactly the same from before, but I don't want you to accidentally cancel anything out that you're not supposed to. All right, so just like before, the sine inverse and the sine go away. What you're left with on the inside, you still have the 5x. You don't have just x. Nothing happens to that 5. And we've got... 5x equals sine inverse of 4 fifths. Go ahead and put that in our calculator. What is sine inverse of 4 fifths? We get 0 0.92, I don't remember how far to round, three decimals. So we're going to go for 0 0.9273. And we're, once again, we're talking about being in radians. Um, if you have any questions on that, on the homework, it should be clarified. However, just assume you're in radians. All right, 
Now, the one thing that's super, super, super important here, I'm just going to condense this. So we got 5x equals 0 0.9273. There's a lot of ways to do it from here, but the one way I like to do it, and I think you would like more, do not figure out x yet. Do not divide by 5 yet. We will not divide by 5 until we get the second answer for the other quadrant. What we want to do is get the second number first. All right, so what happens when you change the period from 2 pi is your unit circle gets compressed. If our period is 2 pi over 5, then really we would have to draw the unit circle with the angles all the, around, all the way around going from 0 and then this one here, if we have a different period, then this would have to be 2 pi over 5, and we have to adjust everything. Which isn't the end of the world, I just prefer to do the same thing every time. I'm going to draw my picture exactly like I normally do. Uh, I like to point out once again what quadrant our angle's in. Uh, quadrant 1 is the angle, the quadrant for the 0 0.9273. Once again, we know that a lot of different ways, but it's between 0 and pi over 2 is the easiest way. And the other quadrant sine is positive, and we're solving sine is positive number. Sine is also positive in quadrant 2. It's the y value. And we solve it the same exact way we did before. You know, don't worry about the 5 right now. Just figure out, what is this angle? Well, the reference angles, once again, are the same, despite the fact that I can't really draw it perfectly like that. And the reference angle for, we can figure out from quadrant 1 here, it's the 0 0.9273 minus 0 which is 0 0.9273. So that is our reference angle. And the way we get our second angle here then, we notice that it is in quadrant two, it's behind pi. It's behind pi, so we got pi minus 0 0.9273. And we put that in our calculator we get 2.2142, 2.2143, rather. All right, so this is going to be our other angle, 2.2143. Two the one thing to keep in mind is this is still 5x. What we do is we figure out both the angles here, and then after we get both of them, we'll divide by the 5. All right, so you get both angles exactly the same way from before, but now we divide by 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we divide the first one by 5, we get x equals 0 0.9273 over 5. I'm trying to get x by itself, and we do that. 0 0.9273 divided by 5. We get about 0 0.1855. We run around to three spots, so 0 
And then the other one, we have 5x equals that, 2.2143. So we divide that by 5. And we get, let's see here, 2.2143 divided by 5, 0 0.443. Right. What we have here, these two numbers are finally what we want in x, and they are the two smallest positive solutions. Okay. But once we have those, I guess I should actually write them in and then we can write the general solutions. Our two smallest positive solutions, 0 0.185, 0 0.443. And then the gen two general solutions, the way we write them, is the same as before. We take each of our answers, 0 0.185, and we add the period, which is 2 pi over 5 times the letter we are told, which is m kind of point that out right here and then we do the same thing with the other one we take our 0 0.443 plus 2 pi over 5 times m All right now the amount of work that goes into these problems is a lot and definitely when I go through the problems on here it's very detailed but once again just kind of overview what we're doing here and it's it's a really helpful if you do that so we figure out the period so we know what we're going to add to at the end we go through and figure out our two smallest positive solutions right we figure out the first one pretty much from the calculator but we do not get x yet and then the same thing for the second one We've used the quadrants and the reference angles to figure out what the second one is going to be. Then this one, we happen to have the 5 here. So to get x, we divide it by 5 to get our two smallest positive solutions. Wrote them down and then wrote out the general solutions from there. All right, so all I have left in this section, you've seen everything. I'm just going to, I just have want to do more problems for practice. But for those of you that feel like you get it, you might be comfortable with stopping here. Um, so the next one I have here, it reads a little bit differently. I can tell you uh, that ultimately it's not going to be different. It says solve 6 cosine of 3x equals negative 1. Round your answer to two decimal spots. Use k as the arbitrary integer. And after finding the solution, use this to write the four smallest positive solutions. All right. So this problem just kind of has this extra step of writing some more answers, you know, just to put some meaning as to what the general solutions are and what they're telling you. All right. So I wanted to make sure we at least looked at that, but there's nothing special here. So let me go ahead and just kind of point out what we're going to do that's going to be different. We talked about the period being different. Um, in the last one, we still want to point that out. The period here is 2 pi over 3, which doesn't simplify. We want to use k as our arbitrary integer, which means we're going to add 2 pi over 3 times k to each. The other thing I wanted to point out here, the thing that looks different, looks like it's going to be something that's more work, but it's not really, is to write the four smallest positive solutions. Right, what we're going to be doing here to write the four smallest positive solutions, we're going to find the two smallest, right? Then that's when k equals zero. So we really are going to have those already. And then the next two smallest, 
we would plug in k equals 1. Right. And then also at the end of this one, I'll show you on the calculator how you can verify this because it does sound a little strange. But like we previewed at the beginning, there's infinitely many answers to these trig functions, trig equations. All right, but we start by getting the two smallest positive solutions. So yeah, 6 cosine of 3, x equals negative 1. All right, we get the cosine part by itself. We divide by the 6. We get cosine of 3x equals negative 1 over 6. We do the cosine inverse of each side. And we get 3x equals cosine inverse of negative 1, 6. And we type that in our calculator. Cosine inverse of negative 1 sixth is about 1.738. How far do we need to round? Two spots. So I'm going to go one farther. 1.738. Right, so we're trying to solve an equation where cosine is negative. Cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. And the answer we found here from our calculator is in quadrant 2. 1.738. But once again, you can remember how to figure that out. There's a lot of ways. The one way is the easiest to see probably. 1.73 is between 1.57, which is about pi over 2, and 3.14. Right, but the other quadrant cosine is negative is in quadrant 3. Remember, we do not solve for x yet, so we're not going to divide by 3. What we need is to figure out this angle. And the goal is if we can figure out this reference angle right here, then we can figure out the other angle. And our reference angle right here, since we know the angle in quadrant 2, we do pi minus that 1.738. Let's see what we get there. we get 1.404. And so our reference angle, it's not part of our answer, remember that. 1.738 is one of our two angles that it's gonna, we're gonna use. But we use the 1.404, the reference angle, to figure out this quadrant three angle, it's gonna be pi plus, since we're past pi. 1.404 and when we do that pi plus 1.404 you have 4.546 so we also have 3x equals 4.546 Again, remember that we have not solved for x. Each of our angles is going to equal 3x. And now to get the two smallest positive answers, we divide each one by 3. All right, so we get x equals 1.738 over 3. See what that is. We get 0 
I'm gonna I'm only rounding these two spots because this is finally what X is and that's how far we need it to round and then the other one we get X equals 4.546 divided by 3 And we get 1.52. Right. Right, so our general solutions, we have our two smallest positive solutions. Our general solution We have our, our two numbers, 0 0.58, and we add the period, which was 2 pi over 3 times the letter that they told us, which is k times k. And our other number is 1.52. So those are our general solutions. To get the four smallest positive, like I mentioned above, we already found the two smallest. That's with k equals zero, we get the 0 0.58 and the 1.52. To get the next smallest ones, we plug in k equals one. So we get take our 0.58 and add two pi over three. You want to make super sure that you're doing adding it and uh, dividing it correctly. You can put the two pi over three in parentheses. We get two point six seven. And then we take the one point five two and also add two pi divided by three. And we get three point six one. All right now this one's just kind of ex you know getting you a, an idea of why we write the general solution is so we can easily write bigger solutions. All right but what I want to do here just to kind of hit on what we did if we look at where the two graphs of these intersect 6 cosine of 3x and -1 our four smallest positive solutions should be about that. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those, compare them to each other. We got six cosine of three x. And we want to see where does it hit negative one. Uh, my window doesn't need to be very big because we're looking at numbers right here for x. So I'm going to do x from like zero to four. Y, since the we're trying to look at where it hits negative one, and the uh, range, the amplitude is six. I'm going to go from negative six to six on Y. Let's change that scale to one, and graph. Right. So we can see this is where X is zero, which means this is the smallest positive solution. This is the second, third, and fourth. If you want to see where they intersect, you can second calc and go to where they intersect. And you just kind of scroll over. This is kind of a, I would say, a pain to do because you're just clicking left and right until you get close. But I'll show you with this first one here. If you hit get close to point, hit enter, hit enter again, and then it'll say guess and hit enter one more time. You see we get about our answer. Now keep in mind we rounded quite a bit. They round and this is perfectly not rounded. So their answer is going to be a little different than ours. They got 0 0.58. Hey, that's exactly what we got actually. Well, we got 0 0.58. It was 0 0.579.
But if you want to see where the second one is, that you got the right answer, you can go to intersect again, scroll over, do the next one and hit enter again, enter again. And they intersect at 1.51-ish. So that one's slightly off, but that's just a rounding thing. We can believe it. Intersect. If you want to go to the next one, I'm not going to do the fourth one. But if you go to the third one here, it should be at the third smallest number we have. We're pretty close. And they intersect at 2.67, which is exactly what we got. If you check the third one, should we should get about 3.61. Or sorry, the fourth one. But that's what the general solution is. It's finding the two points of intersection and then telling you what you have to add or subtract to get to the next ones. All right, so finally, the last one here. This one I just wanted to add in because pi always seems to scare people. But ultimately, if you can do the previous ones, you can do this one. All right, it's just going to have a different period when we get there. We want to solve 3 times sine of pi over 3 times x equals 2. I'm going to go ahead and do what I did with the other one and just point out the period and what we're going to be adding at the end. All right, the period's 2 pi over this. 2 pi over pi over 3. You can do your keep change flip thing. We multiply, change the division to multiplication to 3 over pi. The pi's cancel and we get 2 times 3, which is 6. So what we're going to do, we're going to use n as the arbitrary integer. Like it says, we want to add 6n to each. It does look kind of funny when you're adding, uh, your period does not have pi in it, what you're adding, but that's okay. Right, it's not an issue at all. We're going to add 6n to each. But now we do revert back to the same thing. We find the two smallest positive solutions. So we start by solving our answer, or solving our problem, getting the sign by itself. Divide each side by the three. And we get sine of pi over three times x equals two thirds. Right, do not let this scare you. Because of the pi over 3 here, we get rid of the sine the same way we've been doing it. We do the sine inverse of each side. And we get what's inside, pi over 3x equals sine inverse of 2 thirds. And we type this in our calculator, sine inverse of 2 thirds. And we get 0 0.7297. All right, now we got to figure out the second angle. So however you want to do this is up to you at this point. Though you definitely want to draw your picture. 0 and 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. Now, one thing you can point out, we're solving where sine is positive. And sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Now, what we got out of the calculator is an angle in quadrant 1. We got 0 0.7297, which is in quadrant 1. And we're also going to get an angle in quadrant 2. Do the same thing we've been doing. We figure out that reference angle because it's going to be the same.
that reference angle quadrant one it's going to be itself we've done that quite a bit because it's 0 0.7 nine seven two nine seven minus zero we have the same reference angle and now we figure out the angle on quadrant two we do pi minus our reference angle right, so what is pi minus that We get 2.412 or 4119. So remember, this is pi over 3x. So we got 2.4119, and that's what pi over 3x equals. Just double checking that I didn't write it down wrong. And now we can get the two smallest positive solutions. Right, we have pi over 3x. If we take each one and multiply by its reciprocal, 3 over pi, 3 over pi, we will get x. Okay, so the first one will get x equals 0. I wrote x equals twice. Don't need to do that. We get x equals 0 0.29. 7297. Maybe I need a nap. 0.7297. And then we multiply it by 3 over pi to get x pi itself. And what does that give us? we get 0 0.696 or it says to round to the two spots so 0 0.70 in our other one we have our 2.4119 and we multiply that by 3 over pi so we got 2.4119 times 3 divided by pi and we get 2.30. So that's our two smallest positive solutions. Our general solutions. We take our two numbers here, 0 0.70. We add the period, which was 6 times the letter we use, we're told to use, which is n. We got 6n, and then we take our other number, 2.30 plus 6n. Okay. Now this one, it wants to write the three smallest positive solutions. Right, so we've got the two smallest here. We already wrote about that, but let's go ahead and list it off. 0 0.70 and 2.30. Now, if we want the third smallest, we need to plug in n equals 1, but we would plug it into the smaller one of the two. Because if we plugged n equals 1 into here, we'll get the four smallest. Right, that's telling us to just add one period to it. And if we plug in n equals 1, we get 0 0.70 plus 6 times 1. And that's something we can do without a calculator. 6 plus 0.7 is 6.70. Uh, but there's a reason to not be afraid of that pi. Uh, ultimately, it was broke down to be exactly the same. Uh, this section, I always feel like it's a lot at once. That's a, there's a reason why we did a lot of these types of things in the first unit. Right? We did a lot with reference angles, figuring out other angles using reference angles. So 
hopefully you, you really took the time in unit one to learn and understand that and maybe this isn't so bad. Right, but we'll be using this stuff in section 2.4 pretty quickly just on solving um, equations that come from word problems.